the West Island, the suburbs of Montreal. It may be clear now that I have a slight obsession about the history of this place. Let's continue this obsession, shall we? This is the Valwa Country Club, built by the Valwa Citizens Association back in 1922. They were the group of people that make sure that Valwa was being run correctly. They needed a new clubhouse, so why not build it on the water? It's not like there wasn't tons of land available. <laughs> This must have been a pretty happen in place. It hosted uh, wedding receptions, concerts, dances, uh, drama clubs, and it was probably the only place at that time where you can go see real moving pictures because everything else was a farm. <laughs> the more I was learning about this place, I realized that these pictures, though there were many of them, weren't properly representing this club. It's just facts. It's just information about this place. And it's very cold. It's as if I've seen the greatest hits of this Valwa Country Club. I kept thinking, I need more. And I know what you're saying. You need more too. And I got your back. <laughs> So I called Michael, he's a local painter, and he's painting a series on Valwa. I asked him to paint a unique perspective of the Valwa Country Club, something that I see in my head, something that incorporates elements from the articles and the pictures that I've seen, like my own mixed tape called the Valwa Country Club. The question is, is first of all, I guess, how do you choose a, a perspective? Well, this is kind of a different one, so I think we're off, we're into uh, uncharted territory here, right? <laughs> yes, Spock. <laughs> but Michael and I couldn't do this alone. We were still missing an element. The element of warmth. The element of realism. And that missing element... Hello. ...was Bill Gordon. Oh, I, it's as clear in my mind as when I was 10 years old. It was the meeting place, there's no question. Uh, I used to have babysitters take me there, you know, and stay with me the day. So the Valwa Country Club was built on stilts, six feet above Lac St. Louis, stretching out at least 50 feet into the bay. The building was built on stone and full of rocks, and the building was supported on that. According to Bill, it was a good location because the water was only four feet deep. Oh, inside, was it just one big open space? Yeah, almost like a gymnasium, you know? Yeah. I went to my first movie there, and it was Shirley Temple. I can still remember it. When animals cry, What's great about the pictures that are available is that you can actually see how the country club went through some changes. They never expanded the main room that was there from the beginning, but outside, they expanded the sides. 15 feet wide and the length of the building, so we swam from that boardwalk into the water. And Bill helped fill in the gaps of information that was not shown, like here. Boats would be underneath, all the woodies, you know, they parked underneath there. And over here. Under that uh, walkway, were the changing rooms. You know, you could rent a locker or they had public ones. And why were there changing rooms, you ask? Because at that time, you got a fine if you weren't dressed decently walking on the road or actually be put in jail. So I was thinking this, what I found always weird about the pictures, it always seems so far away. Maybe if we make this really large here, it's almost like you feel like oh, you're, you're right walking in. So as much as I was learning about this place and how great it was, I kept thinking, why Valwa? Why not Verdun or Lachine? Places that were more populated, more developed in those days. Why Valwa for the three farmers that were here? Why? Well, there were some elements pointing in our favor here. If you haven't noticed, it's called Valwa Bay because it's an actual bay. Now I'm gonna start easy. <laughs> which means that the waters are calm, there isn't as much wind, it's probably shallow, and it's not too far off from downtown. So let's look at how people would get there. Well, they had that covered too. Look how close the tracks go to the bay. It's like 100 feet away from the shoreline. And there was a train station right at the center of the bay. So why wouldn't they build a pier right here? Transportation was great, location's great, calm waters of Valwa Bay, but this stuff doesn't happen by accident. Going as far back as the 1880s, Valwa was encouraging tourism. People longed more for quiet quiet environments and a place where they can spend their summers. And where else would they go but the beautiful shores of Valwaville? They called it Valwaville. Thus, the summer retreat movement of Point Claire and Valwa began. People swam and sailed and paddled and, you know, that's that's what it was all about. This was the Laurentians, you know? Today's Laurentian. That's what the lakeshore was. It was Montreal people came out to the lakeshore. It eventually led to this, and this, and this. You've heard of this, the Maples Inn, built in the 18-somethings. But I'm not here to talk about the Maples Inn, because there was something more impressive happening in Valwa. 
this. This is the Chateau St. Louis, built in 1907. A three-story, five-star, grandiose hotel, the biggest hotel on the shore of Lac St. Louis, equipped with 100 rooms. Each floor had a three foot by 14 foot veranda. It had hot and cold water on every floor, and each floor had plenty of bathrooms and private baths. There was a kitchen run by a French chef, tennis courts, a bowling alley, billiards, croquet. They had a massive hall with their own orchestra. They had their own boardwalk running from the Bawa train station right to their hotel. They even had their own pier for yachting and cruising and sailing. And they commissioned their own steamboat. A steamboat. An actual steamboat. Oh boy! They had their own garage with their own gas supply so you can gas up in your little Ford T and go back into the city if the train wasn't your thing. And all this still 15 years before the country club was even built. It was a nice place to live. The train brought you to Montreal and, and they brought you to the country, you know? It was country. So by the end of World War I, a lot of the summer residents were becoming all season residents. And then moving into the 20s, they had built about 50 new homes above the tracks, which would have been considered a boom in those days. That was the big boom. When they built houses over there, the lakeshore took off. So of course it makes sense why the country club was built there. This is where the people were. It was following the trend of this lavish golden age on the beautiful shores of Valwa Bay. Now wouldn't it be great to experience it one last time after collecting all this information from the articles, from the pictures, from Bill. This is the Valwa Country Club. Can you only imagine this spectacle out in the water? In the evening, the lights reflecting off the water, the gentle sounds of the lake water hitting the shore, and the echo sound of the dance music coming from the weekly dances. But wait a minute, if this place was so great, why was there a last time? When was there a last time? Why does this place not still exist? There's no way that an, a legit scuba diver is gonna wanna go in Lac St. Louis in like three feet of water. <laughs>